Hi everyone, Dr. Remy from Pain Free and Fit and Posture Size. Today we're here on the beautiful North Shore of Long Island and we're going to be going over how to climb and descend stairs without aggravating your knee pain. Hope you enjoy. So let's keep in mind our unique postural and stability issues before we attempt to climb stairs or descend stairs. If you've yet to do so, I invite you to go to the Pain Free and Fit or PostureSize.com websites where we have a free body analysis where you can learn about the unique posture and stability issues of your ankle, foot, knee, and hip, which are imperative to plugging that information into the following technique. To begin with, when we take a step up the stairs, we want to make sure we're landing on all four points of our foot, meaning the two back corners of the heel, the two front corners of the forefoot just behind the toes. We want to make sure that as we step, we allow enough distance with our foot forward so that as we're stepping, our knee is not coming over the front of our toes. So we have to be well enough in front so that as we ascend the stairs, we're not having a forward drive, but rather an upward lift of the body through the knee. We want to make sure that the kneecap and the foot are facing straight ahead. For those of you who have a rotational issue where your knee has a tendency to bend in a different position or angle than your toes do, you need to make sure that you have both your kneecap and your toes aligned in the same area. For those of you with a lateral tracking patella, meaning that the kneecap has a tendency to slide outwards due to more development of the outer thigh muscles versus the inner thigh or quadriceps muscles, we need to make sure we're exerting the tension inwards with the kneecap towards the middle line of our body. You can, when practicing, take your two fingers and place one on the inside and outside aspect of your kneecaps and tense your knee into your inner finger as you begin to put weight onto your knee. That'll activate the VMO or inner quad muscle. You want to feel equal tension from inner to outer thigh muscles where they attach to the upper edges of your kneecap. We want the hip to be engaged so that the hip is using the glute muscle. When we bring our leg forward on the swing phase to place our foot on the step, we want to make sure that we're thinking, especially if we have an anterior hip malposition, of a backwards pressure of the hip bone on the side of your hip. The glute muscle or buttock muscle will help you to do that. That side of your thigh bone, the most prominent aspect of it, known as your greater trochanter, should actually move backwards in the hip socket to be able to bend your leg forward and place your foot. We also want to make sure as we're about to bear weight to move upwards, we don't hip hike, meaning the typical tendency is for the hip to swing up on the weight bearing leg. And that's a problem that can extend right down into changing the mechanics of your knee. So you want to make sure that your hips are level from side to side. If you put your hands on your hips, you can swing that lead hip down so it becomes level and also avoid leaning the lead side of the rib cage into that weight bearing or standing leg. You want to make sure the ribs are level as well as the hip. So that typically means we need to open up the hip and the ribs by swinging the hip down and leaning the ribs up on that weight bearing side. When all of this is engaged, we're going to make sure we keep our knee, foot, and hip corrections as we stand straight up. Those mechanics many times over almost 30 years of orthopedic and chiropractic practice has either totally resolved or significantly relieved knee pain as my patients and clients try to ascend stairs with poor mechanics. Once you have good mechanics, pain disappears because you're using these soft tissues in a more appropriate way. Now remember, there are many corrective exercises that support the ability to keep the foot balanced, to keep the hip down, the rib up, and the kneecap moving in the correct position. Those are available through many of our programs as well as on our website, so I invite you to learn those corrective exercises. By strengthening with those exercises, you're going to be able to perform this a lot easier. When we descend stairs, the typical mistake is the rear knee is going to become compressed because of flexion. The knee as it bends increases the pressure underneath the kneecap or patellofemoral joint, and that can become very painful. That's why going downstairs, many times people with bad knees or painful knees are going to go down leading with that bad knee to try to take that flexion or bend out of it. However, if you want to try to start working towards more normal mechanics, what I'd suggest is using the same concepts that we discussed going upstairs, except as we come down, you want to really emphasize the kneecap tension in, maintaining four points, 
avoiding hip hiking as you're on this standing side as this leg is coming down and use a more hip backwards motion to come down the stairs. Do you see what I'm doing? I'm not dropping my hips straight down, but rather backwards. That engages the hip muscles more, decreasing the flexion component on the knee. And as I hit the step, I'm gonna hit more with my forefoot than my flat foot. That little bit of difference is gonna decrease the amount of flexion or bend in the knee, which many times will decrease the pain as you come downstairs. So plug these techniques into your stair walking. Remember, get a good full, full body analysis on your ankle, foot, knee, and hip mechanics so you know where your unique faults are and what you need to emphasize. Learn the supportive corrective exercises. And in a short time, I'm sure, by using these techniques, you'll be able to both go up and down stairs with a lot less knee pain. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. We've got all kinds of great tips for knee pain on there as well as corrective exercises. If you'd like me to help share this program and these types of exercises with others, please help me out by giving me a thumbs up below. Leave your questions and comments. I'll try to get back to you. Hope this helps with your knee pain.